Tracy's point. And we are here with another R. Kelly update. And so I haven't really been covering this story as much as I have in the past. And so to kind of just pick up where we are right now, um, R. Kelly was arraigned for like the third time in the Eastern District of New York, um, another superseding indictment. And so Ann Donnelly was away from the court. She has not been replaced as the judge that I am aware of. Um, she's still on the case. And so there was a magistrate that was sitting in, and the magistrate, I think, is like the head judge in each division um, of the federal court or what have you. And so this, I guess, would be like Ann Dunley's superior if you look at it from a managerial standpoint. And so this person um, sat in on the arraignment last week. It was a very short arraignment. And basically, um, R. Kelly pleaded not guilty to the new superseding indictment. And so a couple of people had asked me, you know, what were the new charges or who were the new um, alleged victims in the superseding indictment? So there are no new um, victims in the superseding indictment. Basically, if you go back to the previous indictments, you'll see that under the racketeering charge, so there's five or six counts on the Eastern District of New York indictment. The first count is the racketeering charge. And so under that racketeering charge, there is numerous, um, like sub counts, I guess. <laughs> I don't know how you would really categorize it, but they're basically laying out their points of what each allegation is, what codes under the RICO Act that they are charging him with, and then a brief description. So if you go through all of those, and I can't remember how many it was, maybe nine is in my mind and 13 is in my mind. So there were either nine, um, points under that count one or there were 13. It was some number. And so within that number, there were four paragraphs, four points, four letters, however you want to put it. And those apply to Jane Doe number five, which we know is Azriel Clary. So in this superseding indictment, what they did was they took those four points under the racketeering count, which was count one, and then they created counts two, three, four, and five, and they basically are now, in addition to count one allegations, they're basically adding four more counts to the overall indictment, and those four counts are breaking out those points from the racketeering charge and making them individual counts. If that makes sense. And so they took those items, they made them their own separate counts, and I think they may have added a sentence or two to the original text um, to make these counts, I guess, stronger. But they're basically the same information that was in the racketeering charge, and they've just, you know, just adding on um, to these charges, and we all know at this point, they are basically doing whatever they can, trying to break his spirit, trying to break him down, and make him want to plea out in order to get out of jail or to get all of this over with. And so um, a lot of news outlets were reporting that there were two new victims, that they were new allegations. There are no new allegations. It's the same information that was under the um, the count one, which was racketeering. That same information, they just added um, counts against him. And so by putting Jane Doe number five as count two, three, four, and five, that then pushed down the counts that were there under um, Jane Doe number six, which we know is Faith Rogers. So whereas Faith Rogers was ev ev 
initially, I believe, counts two, three, four, and five. She's now counts six, seven, eight, and nine. And so they um, really didn't make any changes to Faith's information. They may have clarified some wording or whatnot, but there was nothing new in this superseding indictment. It is basically the same information. They're just pulling stuff out of that racketeering charge to create new counts to make the overall indictment seem like is you know like they're really coming from him for him they you know come across new information and all of that and so speaking of the superseding indictment i find it interesting in the um, response to op the opposition to bond that came out today that i'm going to go over with you guys is that they you know kind of like oh you know this is the third time he's filed a motion to get out, you know, nothing's changed. And so they're acting like, oh, you know, they're getting on their nerves because they keep filing these motions to try and get him bond. But they don't think that they're getting on the legal team's nerves by keep coming up with these superseding indictments that are really nothing new. You're not adding anything on. You haven't uncovered any new information. <laughs> You're just rewording the original indictment and just trying to make it seem like it's bigger and better than what it was before when it's basically the same information that was there all along. And then the other thing I want to say, um, a lot of people seem to think that, you know, the little gimmicks that Azrael is pulling, um, you know, the whole video that she did last week, where she's saying that, you know, she's going to tell her story. She's going to not only tell her story, but she's going to tell everybody else's story also that, you know, the things that Azrael is doing with the Photoshop pictures and whatnot, they think that. That is what's keeping um, the judge from giving R. Kelly bond. I don't think that that's what's keeping them. I think that they have made up in their mind that they're not going to give him bond. And it doesn't matter what um, Steve Greenberg or the other attorneys write in these motions. They don't want to give him bond. And I don't think it has anything to do with Azrael. I don't think it has anything to do with the stupid stuff that she's doing. I just think that they decided they don't want to give him bond, and no matter what, um, if they can write a strong enough response, you know, opposition to what Greenberg is submitting, then the judge is going to go along with the prosecutors, with the you know the state attorney or the U.S. attorneys in this matter, and so it's just a tug of war, and basically. Every time they come out with these superseding indictments, then they have. The defense has the right to request a new bond, and we saw that under the magistrate who heard the arraignment last week. She asked them, okay, so are you going to be submitting a new request for bail? Because that's part of the procedure. Like, every time you get arraigned, you get to ask for a bond. And so for them, you know, the Eastern District of New York to be like, oh, they're agitated, they're annoyed that he keeps um, trying to get out is crazy, and it's very condescending. And and so in Greenberg's motion um, last week, he filed this on Friday because when they did the arraignment on the 30th, they stated that they had found out that R. Kelly had had an exam, a medical exam back on March 30th or March 31st and that they had the, the jail had the results of the medical examination on April 1st, but they didn't share the information with his legal team with R. Kelly until April 29th, and then the arraignment was on April 30th, and so they felt that they hadn't had time to review the information, and so they would file their motion at a later date, and the judge was okay with that. And so the motion was actually filed on Friday, which was May 1st. And so this is what the motion stated. It says, um, Dear Judge Dunley, uh, we respectfully request that you uh, revisit your decision denying Mr. Kelly Bell, Doc um, 61, uh, for one, he has a legitimate health risk that was being secreted from him by the Bureau of Prisons who failed for the past month to disclose that March testing revealed he is likely diabetic 
In addition, the ruling unfairly skews things against Mr. Kelly, completely failing to recognize any of the facts that show even more so now in the current quarantine environment that he is neither a risk of flight nor a danger to the community. The ruling does not appear to consider whether there are any set of conditions which could reasonably assure the court that he will appear and would not be a danger to the community. We are again asking for release during the pending crisis, given the increased health risk in an incarcerated situation, i.e. being incarcerated creates its own high risk. So for those of you that are new to all of this and wondering what's going on, you know that we're under the COVID pandemic that's happening around the world. And there are certain cities that are being impacted more than other cities in other states. And so um, Chicago is one of those cities.